and, and I got to say to John, thanks a lot for putting me on uh, after the male model from MIT. Nice. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So I rise like, molecular protein, which will insane your life. I'm also very smart. It's like, you probably speak six languages. Jesus, so. Very good. Yeah, he was, the, he was the most popular, and he was going to be the most successful, but he went to the Barbizon School of Modeling. That's where he went. Which, so that was the school I went to. So that's what I'll be bringing you tonight. You remember that school? Anybody? Yeah. You remember that? Be a model or just look like one, right? <laughs> it's like, if you look like one, how can we not one? Who wants to just be a model? I mean, what do you, what do, you do when you walk into this school? You know, walk out of like, you, know, you graduate from this school, like you walk into a Burger King? I'll have a Whopper <laughs> and fries and a shake. Are you a model? No, I just look like one. <laughs> I go to MIT. Just kidding. <laughs> and I'm inventing shit as we go along. So, uh, John, this, uh, John, how about a hand for him, man? Because this is like <laughs> great ideas. And he's been on his feet all day. And he's producing. He's like the Jerry Lewis of ideas. It's like the telethon. He's back there, he's doing shots of Red Bull, he's shooting coffee into his eyeball. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Painful to watch. And then he's also worrying about the balloon. <laughs> the whole balloon. And so I'm thinking like, wow, it goes way up there into the sky, and then it falls back down there. Like, we're gonna see the really cool pictures of the balloons, the pictures that it's taken from way up in the sky and the curvature of the earth. I'm like, I want the pictures of the guy climbing up the tree in the morning. <laughs> they got some arborist from Belchertown probably out having a couple of beers why he can't do it tonight. He's like, I'll get to it in the morning. <laughs> Climbing up the tree with his spikes. What the hell, these smart people. <laughs> That's what I want to say tomorrow. Um, so, so many ideas, and it's really great. I do run, I run a nonprofit uh, on Nantucket, which is kind of an oxymoron. Uh, <laughs> But it's the Nantucket Comedy Festival, and what I do is I have an educational program called Stand Up and Learn, which teaches kids that will build self-esteem and self-confidence through public speaking and through humor. So uh, I get the comics that I've known. I've been a comedian for many years. So I, I get them to come out to Nantucket. So it's a good place to get them. And then we sort of capture their ideas and things out there. Because if it was like, if it was the Newark Comedy Festival, I don't know if they would actually come and see me. <laughs> Nobody from Newark here, maybe not. <laughs> The male model was from Newark. That's where he's really from. It's just uh, so, um, and I'm, I was worried because I was watching Laurent, the French guy, was ruining my whole food experience. <laughs> he's talking about food and what's, what's in your trout. I'm like, I have no idea what the hell's in my trout. <laughs> and I had just come back from the village, what was it, the village smokehouse. I had brisket and a couple of beers. I'm like, I'm a dead man. <laughs> I am a dead man. But Jeffrey from MIT is going to save me with his food. Um, <laughs> It's like, it's right, I'll eat shitty food for 25 years, and then Jeffrey will save me. <laughs> and they'll model with the new proteins to come up. And then, then the guy from the CIA, Richard, uh, an amazing thing about, you know, about tailoring education to each particular student, and I think that, is, that, was, that was pretty amazing and pretty inspiring. And I'm thinking, like, I went to Catholic school. You know, they would have tailored my education every morning. They would have been like, uh, Sister Catherine Mary would be like, detention. <laughs> Wait, I, uh, again? Yeah, again. <laughs> Um, but then I was thinking, he was up there, he was at the CIA, and he ha has all these great ideas and everything, and I'm like, the only thing I'm thinking about, I'm like, Petraeus had a Gmail account? <laughs> Guy from the CIA is using Gmail? Oh. That's how I think. Then I wanted to see the Harvard Forest guy maybe go get the balloon. That would have been even better than the guy from Belchertown. <laughs> and then Dr. Schwartzberg kept saying surgery was hard. I'm like, no shit, doctor, that's why I'm telling jokes. <laughs> In fact, when he put up surgeries, I'm like, sugaries. There's four million sugaries in the world. Wow. No wonder there's an obesity problem in this world. <laughs> and he's a translator that translates all the. We need a Swiss guy. That's basically what we need. Because they speak any, every language. That's what I thought Jeffrey was. I thought for sure he was Swiss. So I, I was hanging out with some Swiss guys. Like, we were watching a soccer game. And the guy's talking every language of whoever walks by. It's unbelievable. I, I mean, he's like Spanish, French, Italian, you know, they're everything. And I'm like, how many languages do you speak? He goes, yeah, he speaks six. He speaks five, I just speak four. <laughs> and I'm standing there, I'm like, well, I speak one kind of good. 
I'm like, why do you think that is? He goes, I do think that we are better educated than you. <laughs> really? I go, not better, just different. He goes, no, I think we take into account more culture. It is better. <laughs> better, different. No, it is better. I'm like, well, our army could kick your ass. So this guy <laughs> just playing the ugly American everywhere. Um, Americans do think they can speak any language in the world. We don't need a translator. We, we think all we have to do is make one of our words sound like one of theirs. <laughs> you ever notice that? Like, you ever seen an American try to speak Spanish? We're like, El Sandwichio. <laughs> I want one O Sandwichio, please O. <laughs> I think in many, you know, if you've grown up or spent any time in Boston, we do need a translator. Uh, that someone who speaks doers sometimes here at night. Uh, um, all right, so, so I... I'm just kind of getting into teaching now, so I've been very inspired tonight about everything I've seen and uh, and teaching uh, the students. I've coached a little bit. I actually coached soccer, which was uh, soccer was kind of my passport to the world. I got to see a lot of the world and, and learn about a lot of different cultures because of soccer. Um, and you were talking about the taxi cab drivers from Buenos Aires. I live in New York City. You get all your geopolitical news and information from the taxi cab driver, <laughs> and you, and you always you know your first impressions are bad because you get in the, the taxi. And you're like, how you doing? East 80th, please. The guy's like, 80th? No, 80th. 80 feet? No, 80th. 80th? What? What? <laughs> no, what did you say? And the do way? What? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> but then you find out the guy's like, you know, a chemical engineer. He speaks six languages. And you're like, OK, I'm the idiot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting here. So I always talk about soccer when I get in a cab. So it snowed last week in New York. This is the truth. I get in the cab, and I want to see where the guy's from because I want to ask him how his soccer team's doing. World Cup qualifying's coming up. You know, I'm like, so I look, and his name, this is the God's honest truth, last name first, first name last. His name is Fofana Bana, right? <laughs> Swear to God, West African must be, I'm thinking, okay, you know. And, but I, th I see that name, and I'm like, Wow. What a cool name. And, and I do the same thing any one of you would do. I look him right in the eye and I go, banna, banna, for fanna, fanna, banna. <laughs> he looks at me and goes, why does everyone sing me that song? <laughs> I go, nobody told you, banna? That's like having the name happy birthday, for God's sakes. <laughs> so I start talking in soccer with him and, and we're talking about each other. He's been living in the United States for two weeks. And I'm like, this is awesome. My, my grandparents are immigrants to this country. You know, he's an immigrant now. This is a great country for immigrants. So I'm like, wow. And we're talking, and, and he's like, yeah, two weeks, and it's, it, you know, it's snowing out. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is the first time Banna's ever seen snow <laughs> and certainly ever driven in it. And as soon as I connect that thought, the car goes, <laughs> <laughs> we do two huge spins in the middle of Fifth Avenue. The car goes up against the curb in the opposite direction, stalls. Poof. Banna goes, I know drive. <laughs> I go, Banna, I have to go to another show. He goes, yeah, I know drive. I go, I'll drive. <laughs> he goes, okay. <laughs> so Banna gets out of the car, gets in the back. I get in the front. I grew up in Connecticut in the snow. Like I'm like trying to tell him about my world. Well, Banna, you can't hit the brakes too hard. You have to kind of go slow into the... I'm telling him about his world now that he sees with this snow and this exchange of information. He's telling me about his life, which is just, so, you know, amazing what people go through. And he's like, famine and civil war. And I'm like, oh, I'm just trying to keep up. And, and I'm like, um, I went to Catholic school, so I can kind of identify <laughs> with you. <I> d <laughs> Hopefully the nuns aren't watching. Sister Catherine Mary will kill me. Um, but I think, you know, so we're talking and we're going and snowing. And I get to the other comedy club pull up to the curb, you know. I open up the front door, get out. He gets out of the back. I pay him. <laughs> he gives me a big hug. You know, he goes, goodbye, Kevin, my friend. I'm like, goodbye, Banna. I walk up, to all the other comics are standing there. The other comics look at me and they're like, what the hell was that? <laughs> I go, that, my friends, is America. That's what that is. <laughs> it is. Oh, no, so I tell you, with soccer, too, I also coach. I coach, as I said, and uh, I have 24 kids on my team. They're from everywhere, every race, every religion, every ethnicity, truly what the country's about. But uh, I have two kids now. I try to memorize all their names, okay, which is easier said than done. Because, like I said, they're from everywhere. A lot of vowels, you know. <laughs> like, I'm trying to learn the kids' names. It's like Imu Amagachi, um, Janus Mahalik, 
Uh, one, one kid from, he's from Egypt, his name is Mukhtar. Just one name, I don't know if it's his first or the last. <laughs> Just Mukhtar, he's like the Egyptian version of Sting, you know. <laughs> so I'm trying to learn all these names. So I get every name down and I'm like, all right, I got it, I got it, I got it. I, I'm screwing up two kids' names. And the problem is both of the kids happen to be Asian, right? So I'm calling the wrong Asian kid the wrong Asian name. And then, then it gets in your brain, and there's a doctor or somebody here who could probably help me with this one, because then I'm concentrating, and the harder I try, the more I screw it up. You know, so I'm like, I keep doing it, and I'm like, oh, and I did it again. And finally, I said to my assistant coach, Ellis, who's black, I'm like, Ellis, I just did it again. I called the wrong Asian kid the wrong Asian name. I feel like I'm doing some sort of racist thing. And he goes, hey, look, man, uh, I'm not Ellis, so <laughs> perhaps, you <laughs> perhaps you have a problem there, so. <laughs> I love, I love this, though. Uh, these are the smart people in school. I was the, the one fooling around, and I wish I had listened a little bit more. It's great, because these guys are, are changing the world, and these women are changing the world. I'm telling jokes about my penis at Uncle Bucky's Chuckle Hut in Sioux City, <laughs> Iowa. So, um, But I have a, my daughter is uh, love of my life, and I, uh, you know, so this is all important. So, like, my, you know, my daughter, it, if you have a daughter, the, the fathers who have kids, it's like, if you have a daughter when you're a dad, it's like the w most wonderful feeling in the world because my daughter walks down the stairs. She's like, that's my daddy, daddy. He's my daddy, daddy. And it's the greatest feeling in the world. And I see my buddies who have boys, totally different vibe. Right? Little boys walk down the stairs every morning, look at their fathers, and they're like, I think I can take them. <laughs> Not today, definitely tomorrow. <laughs> and he's sleeping with my mom. That's pissed me off. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> you get it. I'm, I'm getting paid. You have it going on here? Yeah. <laughs> what do you have? Do you speak English? I'm going to have to bring Jeffrey back out. <laughs> Me know English. Me know English. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> you speak English. How many kids do you have? Uh, in America? Or <laughs> in America? Dude, you get around. What are you, James Bond? Look at you. How many kids do you have in America? I'll leave that one alone, I think. Uh, <laughs> two in Spain, five in Italy, one in Zurich. Uh, well, now, so yeah, so I have the, I'm, I'm getting payback now, though, because my daughter is uh, 13, so now it's, yeah, now it's, my daughter has now turned into a human sound machine. It's like, whatever I do, no matter what I do, she's like, <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Um, you see the difference. She actually said to me, she was humming a song, and there's enough of us here of age can say it. She's humming a song. I go, oh, that's a Fleetwood Mac song. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like what? She goes, it's not. It's Glee. I'm like, oh god. <laughs> I'm like honey, before Glee, it was Fleetwood Mac. She's like, oh god, dad. <laughs> <laughs> so we're learning all the time, aren't we? We're Trying to figure out women still. And little girl. My daughter, like, we're walking home from school, and she's venting about her day. You know, she's just walking now and walking across the park in New York. And she's like, you know, Danny stepped in my knapsack. And Madison, she keeps copying my homework. And my teacher said, da, da, da. I'm just trying to be your dad. And I'm like, well, you know, you have to tell Danny that's inappropriate. And you, it's not going to help Madison to copy your homework. And you need to look at your teacher in the eyes. And she's finally at the end. She's like, Dad, I don't want you to solve my problems. I just want you to know what I'm feeling. Like, holy shit, I'm married again. Can't believe it. <laughs> I, I got to make this one work. So, uh, but I was, I've always laughed because I see my, boy, my buddies who have boys now. It's, it's, you know, they all develop differently. Uh, I think I'm getting payback now as a teenage daughter. Because like, when my daughter was three years old, I was thanking my lucky stars I had a girl. Because have you ever seen the difference between a three-year-old boy and a three-year-old girl? For sure, nothing cuter in the world than a three-year-old little girl. They're like little people. They're in their dresses, and they're talking, and they're sharing, and their hands are on their hips already. They're like. <laughs> <laughs> Every one of the little girls, is wa they're walking up to me. They're like, can I have some juice, please, Caitlin's dad? <laughs> May I have one napkin, please, Caitlin's dad? Thank you, Caitlin's dad. I'm like, oh, so cute. <laughs> Same party, three-year-old little boys walking around. Diapers on, fully loaded. <laughs> Hand on their pee pee the entire time. <laughs> they're just walking around the house. They're like, <laughs> I, I want the juice. <laughs> like, 
oh my God, what the hell is wrong with this kid? <laughs> my wife was like, there's nothing wrong with him. He's a boy. I'm like, I know he's a boy. First of all, tell him to get his hand off his pee-pee and get away from my daughter, for starters. <laughs> then I realized it was just this little man in the middle of all these communicative little girls. I know exactly what happened. This little boy walked right into the middle of all these girls, and one of the girls asked him what he was feeling. <laughs> I don't know. That's, can I keep going? Are you all right? A beer and pizza? You should really... I could have gone. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, I flew here on the shuttle, so it was... Uh, fun getting here. Uh, I flew JetBlue. Does anyone <laughs> love it, right? Because so, you watch TV and everything's fine. So it's uh, all, all, all great. Um, paper's rustling. It's John. He's doing the shot of Red Bull. <laughs> no, I, uh, I like, yeah, I like the Je I Je JetBlue. I mean, I fly this one airline. I don't want to say the name, um, but they lose my bags half the time. Um, and now when I just walked up to them, I'm like, hey, how you doing? Can you send this bag to Portland, Maine? This bag to Portland, Oregon, and this bag to Boston. Like, sorry, sir, we can't do that. I'm like, really? You did it last time. I flew this airline. I can. <laughs> oh. And I, I'm always flying out to Nantucket with John. We're living together now that the rules have changed in Massachusetts. <laughs> it's got to be who you are. Right yeah. <laughs> you, your wife. Go ahead, be that way, John. Play hard to get. <laughs> no, so we, uh, we, I always, I have to fly out to Nantucket a lot for the comedy festival. They have the little planes there. Have you done that ever, John? No. no. We should really go some weekend. I don't know. <laughs> Talk to your wife. We'll see what happens. But they, uh, no security when you fly Cape Air or Nantucket Airlines. No security, but they ask you how much you weigh. <laughs> I'm like, is my weight's a problem? Perhaps I should find an alternate mode of transportation. You know. <laughs> How much do you weigh? And the guy in front of me, the first time I ever flew the airline, very big guy, right? So what? But they go, how much do you weigh? He goes, what? They go, how much do you weigh? He goes, um. <laughs> he starts to look at himself. <laughs> like, like he's playing guess the weight at the carnival or something. He's like, um. Uh, and then he looks up and he goes, I don't know. I don't know, but like 185. <laughs> I'm behind him. I'm like. lie about your weight in a little airplane, you know? <laughs> Ten minutes later, I'm swimming in the Nantucket Sound. Yeah, 185, my ass, pal. <laughs> so they get to me, like, how much you weigh? And I'm like, um, 329. <laughs> hey, you guys have been great. This is a great idea. John, thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.